Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well tutorial. This is going to be a very ad hoc tutorial. Basically, every Friday or so, I would like to give myself like an hour to test new technology out. Now, I have mentioned that I want to change my blog. Uh, I want to give it a bit of TLC. I want to give it a bit of a little paint. Uh, the theme that I'm running here is very custom. It's all in WordPress. And you could say, well, why don't you just create a new theme? Well, I could. There is some plugins that I've built for this as well. But what I would like to do is play around with some new technology. And the thing I want to play with is Jekyll. Jekyll is a way of creating static uh, pages, right? S a static website. Now, the first thing I thought of, of when, I, when I heard that was, oh, there's no CMS. You know, how am I going to manage my stuff? There's no database. How am I going to store all those bits and pieces? But Jekyll actually has a very good way of building your site, pulling in variables and just basically building it from a load of static pages, if you will, pages and posts. And so I want to play with that. I want to try that out. It's a new toy. I did say in my previous one of my previous videos, uh, my chats that uh, what I will probably end up doing is wanting to change the whole thing not just the way it looks of the blog and that's exactly where we we are uh, I want to change the whole thing so anyway I want to play around with Jekyll I have played around with it a little bit just locally just to see if I can get things set up um, and running so I'm going to walk through that process uh, with this video and then maybe Maybe we'll uh, have some a series where we move this monolithic uh, blog uh, post or page or site. Um, I mean, this this is it, this is getting a little unwieldy because let me. So these these are all of my videos up here that I've done. Uh, I mean, I've I have said that this these get pulled in through um, Python, uh, which is fine, but. You know, it's it, it, it's a bit troublesome to manage and also it's a bit troublesome to manage the SEO as well because there's various ways of getting to the pages. I think if I was in control a little bit more and took a little less control from from WordPress and put it on my shoulders, then I might be able to manage it a little bit better. But anyway, I digress. Let's let's start this up. Let's create a new repository. So what I'm going to do here is create a new GitHub repo. So my username sorry for github is pfwd and to create a github page you do uh do, do, do actually let me just double check how you do that scroll down here um it is uh the username and then github.io cool okay so if you don't know github pages is a way of um creating a, a basically a, a static website that that is hosted by GitHub and it works very well with Jekyll. So pfwd.github.io uh, and of course you've changed that to fwd as you do always. Now I'm not going to bother with any of this uh, description malarkey. Um, so let's just create the repo github.io, that's good. Do -do -do -do. Um, okay, dokey. Right, let's uh, bring up the old terminal. And what I need to do is I'm going to copy you and I'm just going to do git clone. Now I do apologize with the sound quality on this. If it sounds like my laptop is going to uh, lift and take off, it's probably because uh, it's uh, trying to do all sorts of bits and pieces with other videos, um, uploading them and so forth. I really haven't taken the 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 right time to do this but hey ho I'm uh, I am quite busy today so I thought I would do this dot git okay the reason why I do this right is the reason why I specify a destination is because if I don't put in dot git then it doesn't give me the dot git extension and obviously as a you know I, I work with um, some SVN repos I work with other github repos as soon as I get into the direct directory I know that this is a github directory just a bit of a bit of a tip there so let's create that so it's cloning uh, yeah I appear to have em cloned a empty repo <laughs> let's uh, have a look at that that empty repo there we go it's empty so let's uh, let's do go and try out this github page let's do um, do 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 vi index HTML. So this is a. Let me bring that back into view a little bit. H1, H1. Yep. Uh, this is a test, and close that. 
right and quick page good okay so now I do a, a git add of index and then a git commit commit minus m uh, test file and good let's do a git push push that to the uh, github repo excellent okay so let me just check that let's hit that do do yep we've got our index page in here uh, apparently that happened 11 seconds ago I'm dubious about that let's just copy that because we should technically I don't know if this is gonna work you yes this is a test <laughs> so th that is a, a demonstration I suppose of how you can create very static static pages um, that uh, well static websites I suppose through github that's pretty cool um, right so let's uh, install Jekyll scroll down so it's asking for well it uses Ruby uh, and it's asking for the version of Ruby it needs to be 2.1 uh, or higher let's double check that clear that down uh, 2.4 that's good um, and let's install bundler I think I've already got this uh, I yeah, do I have it is it gonna install it well it's sex successfully installed um, that's cool okay good so I'll leave the links in the description where I'm at uh, below so create your local repository for your Jekyll site um, so okay so we've, we've done all this bit the, the, the git in it and all that stuff that's that that was me cloning the site um, and then install the Jekyll using bundler so we need to create a gem file with this inside and the gem file is what um, Ruby will use to install the dependencies. So vi gem file um, and so let's just paste that in. So that's that looks good to me. Uh, right and quick page. Do do do. Yep, we've got our gem file and we've also got. I'm going to remove the index. I don't need that. Let's remove that. Okay, so we're now on what number three? Name the gem file root directory. Done that. If you've already opened your favorite text editor, such as Atom, where we're using VI because we're pros, that's fine. Install Jekyll and other dependencies from the GitHub page. So now we do a bundle install. Um, okay, let's run that. Do do. Now, like I said, I've I've already installed uh, Jekyll before and I've removed it. So yeah, these things are already done. These dependencies are already in. That's fine. Um, that's good. So we've got that. Let's just double check that we do. <laughs> How many times have I done this before and I've noticed that the uh, path is wrong. Version. Yep, 3.4.3, that's good. Scroll down, so this is optional stuff. Um, nothing out of the ordinary here, although we can do a execute to execute 3.3. Mm, okay. Um, uh, again, this is just uh, creating your GitHub bits and pieces, building your Jekyll site. That this is the fun part. Okay, so navigate to the root directory which we are already in, and then run your site locally. So this is pretty cool. This Jekyll serve. This is actually going to create like a little mini client-sided web server, I guess. So let's copy that. I'm going to clear that down just to give a little bit of room. Right, so apparently something is running on this address. And if this is the case, then that's going to be great. However, I haven't got any files, website files, so no. <laughs> yep. So what I need to do is start adding some Jekyll goodness. There we go. The Jekyll documentation. Okay, so let's uh, let's just go home. This is the I really kind of should have shown you this before. This is the uh, Jekyll website, and uh, it just this is this is a good way of of uh, explaining. It's got some good documentation on what you need. Um, so what we're going to do is just create our very first page, creating pages. Here we go, creating pages. Um, so we can create just normal index.html files. So HTML files as well as um, Markdown, which is pretty awesome. Um, one thing I will just show you is if we scroll up, so I do recommend you go through all of this. I'm doing this very slapdash, but I recommend you go through each one of these bits. But uh, let's just take a look at the directory structure because this is quite important. So we, we, 
configure everything using YAML files, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then anything that is kind of like um, part of the application before it gets parsed and before it gets built, you put like an underscore. So underscore config, underscore data. What it does is it then builds, goes through each one of those, builds that up, and then provides you with a static site, which is pretty awesome. So do check all of this out because this is very, very handy stuff. Some, most of which I haven't even looked at yet, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to those as we get to it. So, so we're going to create our first uh, homepage. I'm going to just do it in HTML. So let's uh, close that down and then do an LS. And I'm going to do a VI of index.html. Here I'm just going to have just h1, h1. Actually, no, I'm going to do p tag like so. And I'm just going to do, uh, this is a test home page, like so. Um, now, one thing that you do need to do is at the top of the page, you need to uh, do what's called um, front matter, okay? Which is this here, front matter. Um, it's basically where Jekyll starts uh, to see that this is a part of, you know, this is the page. Um, you can define sort of like, um, I don't want to use the word global, but you can define these variables um, that you can use that define how Jekyll uh, manages and parses the, the site. So here we've got layout and title, for instance, and you can use these. And there are some other um, uh, custom variables that you can put in and all sorts of stuff. The variable notation is, is like this. So this reminds me a lot of Twig, which is another win because I'm, I'm a heavy Symfony user. I use Symfony quite a lot with my, my clients. So this is really handy because I'm not having to learn any other crazy templating system. Um, it's not Twig. I will just say that it's not Twig. I think it's called Fluid. Um, oh, no, it's not Fluid. Sorry, Liquid. It's a Liquid template, Templating Engine, which on the face of it looks very Twig-like. Okay, let's uh, scroll up and put in this. So let's copy that. Do do do. My laptop sounds like it's going to lift off in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do, because we haven't actually defined any of these things yet, I'm going to remove them. But you do need to ensure that you have these uh, three dashes, uh, or the two sets of three dashes like that. Um, because this is basically the way that uh, Jekyll knows that this is a page right or, or this is a part of the site that needs to be parsed right and quit all good stuff okay uh what i want to do is because if we go back to this um this blog we've got all sorts of stuff right so you've got the header you've got the navigation you've got the sidebars you've got the footers obviously creating a static site you're you know it's you could think, well, hang on a minute, you're going to have to duplicate all of this stuff. But what you can do is create these templates, these partials, these includes, these fragments of uh, smaller portions of code and then share them. Let's go back to, oop, nope, here. Um, and so what I want to do is create some includes. So I, I, I just kind of skipped over templates. We'll get onto that maybe later on. Uh, so we have these includes. The include tag allows you to include content from another file stored in the includes folder. Now the includes folder we don't have out the box. So I think I'm going to have to do a mcdir underscore include. And is it is it plural? S? S, yeah. S, there we go. Uh, okay, so we can uh, cd into include. Sorry. Includes. Um, and what I'm going to do is just follow this sort of example where you've got the include footer. So I'm going to do vi, I'm going to do header.html. And in here, I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do a simple h1 and go, this is the header. Like so. Boom. Close that down. Right and quit. And then I'm going to do another one. But uh, surprise, surprise, I'm going to call this footer. Footer, like so. I'm going to do h2, h2. This is a footer, like that. It's not, not the most technical stuff in the world. Um, and then, how do we add those to the page? So let's cd back, 
go into index. So in index just has, let me bring this up a little bit so you can see it, otherwise it's coming off the page. VI index. Okay, so the way we include these things, if I go back to here, uh, is like this. So it's um, curly braces and then a percentage, which is very twig-like. If you're a Symfony developer and you've tw used twig, this shouldn't be um, very difficult to uh, pick up. So pick that up and copy that here. Whoa! <laughs> That, that's that's not what, what I wanted. <laughs> um, okay, so we want to obviously put the footer underneath, so header. And scroll down like here. Put that in. Okay, so now we're including the header above the paragraph and then the footer below the paragraph. Sounds pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, right? So let's um, write and quit. And what I need to do is serve this thing up. Let's um, serve it up on a plate. Let me I'm gonna bring this up a little bit more. So, okay, so we've just added that. Uh, so hopefully, if I can go here, and I refresh the page, you can see that we have the header and the footer. So that's a way of um, sort of including files, so headers, footers, sidebars. So you can do all that, right? That 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 is fantastic. Um, because that was one of the things that I thought, oh no, <laughs> no, 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 using static sites is, is just going to be painful um, because I'm going to have to duplicate all sorts of stuff. But no, you don't have to do it with Jekyll. And you saw, um, well, this is only a small page, but, you know, it's very fast. There is no database calls. There's no uh, PHP calls. There's, there's, there's nothing that is getting in the way of actually just displaying the page. It is, it is that simple. Um, so now whether or not I use Jekyll to to actually build this or rebuild this site and I'm, I'm gonna have to come up with some ideas for designs and so forth um, whether or not I do this I don't know well, I just wanted to play around with this and I thought well you know this is new technology uh, might as well make a video of it right because you know just to show you how to install it how to use it and so forth so I might do some more this might turn into a series I don't know I'm not gonna put this up to my github profile yet but if I was to do that then I'll I'll create a series out of it and I'll let you guys know but uh, anyway and another point I would like to make I'm recording this way back in May and it probably will not be published until uh, in the later months purely because I've got other videos that I want to publish other tutorials that I want to do other web chats that I want to do so this is kind of like a b-roll if that makes sense um, anyway so uh, <laughs> enough of my random banter and um, subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful. Do share it around. Thanks again for watching. Happy coding. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.